<laughs> Ever get the feeling you've been cheated? Gentlemen, you are the top 1%, the elite, best of the best. Red boy. What are you doing? Tip the spear. Just wondering. Best be sure. Who's the best? In case some of you wonder who the best is, they're up here on this plaque on the wall. There are no points for second place. Dismissed. There's no better place to start when discussing the manliest directors than with John Ford. His work with John Wayne in a way defined American manliness. He was also an amazing film director and one of the greatest directors of all time. His body of work is extensive and truly groundbreaking. If you've never seen a Ford movie, start with The Searchers or Stagecoach. Both are Hollywood classics. I would also recommend my personal favourite, The Quiet Man. Howard Hawks, like Ford, was from the golden age of Hollywood. And like Ford, he was a man's man. This is from a time when men really were men, and not just a social construct. Hawks' version of manliness was a little more nuanced than Ford, and for me, he doesn't get the credit he deserves. He was an incredibly innovative and versatile director, and didn't limit himself to genres. If you're unfamiliar with his films, start with Rio Bravo or The Big Sleep. But for me, his best movie is the exceptional Red River. If Ford defined his generation, then Sergio Leone became the next phase of manliness in the movies. Clint Eastwood became the man with no name. This new version of manliness was not so clear-cut. The lines between wrong and right had become a little more blurred. Leone's reimagining of the Western genre, coupled with Eno Morricone's music, created some of the manliest set pieces ever set to film. I highly recommend A Fistful of Dollars and A Few Dollars More. Just as Wayne and Eastwood defined manliness in their time, Stallone and Arnie came to represent manliness in the 80s. This over-the-top action star slowly transitioned to the more everyman hero, represented best by Bruce Willis. John McTiernan is the very underrated director who bridged this gap from the uberman to everyman action hero. Not only did he make two of the manliest films of the 80s, but probably of all time. 1987's Predator is one of the manliest films you'll ever see. He then followed it up with Die Hard a year later. Come on to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Brian De Palma is the hypersexualized, ultra violent bastard son of Hitchcock. His films didn't always hit the mark, but when they did, you got something shocking and unique. Body double and dressed to kill, our Hitchcock turned up to 11. For me, Scarface and the not-so-manly Carrie are his best films, but I can also highly recommend Blowout. On a side note, Alfred Hitchcock could have easily made this list, but I can't bring myself to put him in any kind of category. He is unquantifiable. Ridley Scott doesn't automatically spring to mind when you think of manly films. After all, this man made one of the greatest female heroes of all time, Ripley in Alien, and also directed Thelma and Louise. What was so great about these films was they were womanly heroes, and not just manly heroes played by women. Scott, like McTiernan, is a director that developed the idea of what a hero could be, starting with The Duelist to Blade Runner, Someone to Watch Over Me, Black Rain, through to G.I. Jane. The action hero was no longer defined by sex. For me, his manliest films were Gladiator and American Gangster. I've seen things Unfortunately, there aren't too many new directors on this list. Hollywood is no longer interested in maverick filmmakers, especially not middle-aged white guys, which make up the majority of the greatest directors in Hollywood's history. But there are some out there. Zayla is the best example of a filmmaker who isn't towing the party line. 
Although Zayla only has three films for his credit, I can highly recommend all three. Walter Hill understands the dynamics of how men interact with each other. Manly films tend to focus more on the hero standing alone. But with films like The Warriors and Southern Comfort, you get a great case study in how men interact and establish hierarchies. Hill was also credited, rightly or wrongly, with inventing the buddy cop movie with the excellent 48 Hours. If you need a great TV series to binge watch, I can recommend Walter Hill's brilliant Deadwood. John Milius is probably best known for his writing, creating some of the most iconic lines in cinema history. Milius' directing shouldn't be underestimated though. The man is a genius filmmaker and one of Hollywood's larger than life characters, a true maverick, the type we're sorely missing today. Big Wednesday is one of my favorite movies of all time. He also directed Conan the Barbarian and the fantastic Red Dawn. It was hard not to give the title of manliest director to Milius, but there is one director, hard as it is to believe, that's even manlier. Standing above all the other uber alpha movie makers is Sam Peckinpah. Peckinpah doesn't just cross the line from manliness into male toxicity, he throws up over it. No director is as politically incorrect than Peckinpah, and God bless the man for it. If you've ever been forced to watch a Sex in the City movie by a wife or girlfriend, you are well aware of the worst of womankind. For an immediate detox, you should force your partner to watch a Peckinpah movie as revenge. This fuel-injected shot of manliness will immediately remove any traces of estrogen from your body. No director has been more tapped into the male psyche. Just watching one of his movies will give you a natural testosterone boost. His male characters are not always heroic. They're often downright repellent. But there isn't a filmmaker alive today who understands the true essence of a man like Peckinpah did, and is not always a pleasant mirror to look into. For all his faults, his films have still done a lot less damage to society than the pure poison of faux feminist garbage that is Sex in the City. Check out the very relevant convoy and the masterpiece that is The Wild Bunch. I'm gonna get rid of it. We're not get rid of anybody. We're gonna stick together just like it used to be. When you side with a man, you stay with him. And if you can't do that, you're like some animal. You're finished. We're finished. All of us. 